Creating Sequential Data File. Welcome back everybody. I'm Prakash Pradhan, your trainer for this entire series. After going through the theoretical portion in our previous session, now the time has come to talk about the practical use of this creating a data file. Now, since this is the second class, now we're going to discuss and see the practically how the sequential data file can be created using your QBasic. So without wasting a much time, so let's go ahead and first understand what type of file we are going to create today. For example, I have written two questions over here. Let's say we are going to work today in this session only for the portion of creating a sequential data file, nothing else. So this is the question number one. It is asking you, you need to write a program to store the name, address, phone number and age in a sequential data file, file name is stuff.dat of five employees that means write a program to store name address phone number and age in a sequential data file staff dot dat of five employees now these all the field name these all are your field name actually address name phone number age these are the field name that is a kind of heading under which you are going to supply the data now there are two ways to create a sequential data file number one you are predefined that how many records are to be entered in your sequential data file number two how many records are to be supplied that is not clear but it will ask you to create a sequential data file to store a so and so you know a data having a particular field name and you need to make a provision for the continuation that means users should be able to enter the data as long as he or she wanted to add the record or store the data in your sequential data file and for your simplicity i'm going to start first from here okay so let's create one sequential data file first one so as usual, we all know that whenever we write a program in QBC, first we should start with the clear CLS so that it clears the your output screen. Now we are going to deal with creating a sequential data file. That means you need to open your file in a mode O. I do believe that you understand the meaning of this open and O. If you miss out the previous video, I suggest you to first go through that. Otherwise, this portion you may not be able to understand. Okay. Now I'm going to create a data file. That's why the mode is O. And every file must have a number, that's okay. I gave a file number and every file must have a name. So what is the file name that's specified in this question? That is staff.dat. I'm going to write the same thing. Now the next question is over here. So how many records you are going to store in this sequential data file? As for the question, five records we are going to provide. So that's why I'm going to use the loop for i equals to one, two, easiest one, okay? One, two. Uh, let's make it three. Okay. Why to go for the maximum one? Okay. I want I don't want you to waste your time So let's give the three. Okay of uh, three employees. No problem. Okay now, After that now what we do now We need to supply our data. So input enter name Address phone number Okay, and then is now, in order to store a name, what type of data type you are supposed to declare? Of course, that's a string. So that's why I'm going to give n dollar. What about the address? For address, we are going to store your string variable line. So that's why I'm going to write a dollar. And after that, I'm going to write a variable for the phone number. I guess the pH is more than enough. And then I'm going to also write the last one is for a. So I'm going to write a. I do believe that you understand the meaning of all this type of the variable. Now after you supply a data over here okay after you supply your data over here in a, with the help of this input statement where do you think those data are to be stored of course that is in a file number one so that's why you need to write this data permanently remember a data file is used to store data permanently but only in a case if you have written otherwise the data is not going to be stored so that's why write has one the meaning of this write statement over here please do note it down the meaning of write is to write the data in your data file actually it will store the data permanently where in file number one but what were the records that you supplied just now of course that is stored in in dollar name a dollar address phone number ph address is a now next time n work is done now if i run it it will ask me to supply name address phone number and age of three staff actually so let's run it start now i'm going to write the first name is let's say run okay address phone number you can give any number is anything since we are in the lab environment next one is name phone number 
okay is anything name address phone number and is anything now if i press enter remember we have written a program to supply three records of three employees so that's why if i press enter my program is over okay now you see over here staff.dat data file is already created and the records are already stored now you don't have to worry about it now this session as i have told you already that we are going to only learn today in this session how to create a sequential data file so that's why don't worry about how to see the content of these records and this will be done in our next session now this was the one way of creating a sequential data file in your file handling okay now what about if you are told that you need to create a one data file okay data file but you are not specified that how many records are to be supplied and you are also instructed that you need to make a provision for the continuation that means make provision to add more records if needed if i have to tell you in a simplest language you are going to write a program in sequential data file to create a data file to provide a data along with this specified field name but it is not specified how many records are to be stored so it depends upon the user as much as you want you should have provision for the continuous and now there comes the power of your control statement so let's do the program for question number two okay now what was your file name if you see over here employee.dat okay let's change the file name employee.dat okay and then we don't have to use a loop okay so we are going to use one you know uh, control statement will you be using to go back to certain block of code so that's why i have written just a one word it can be anything so now let's start enter name address is address after address what we have phone number and is okay phone number is now you need to supply a variable in order to store the data along with this data type let's say name n dollar address a dollar phone number p is a you can provide any variable i do believe you know the rules for naming a variable associated with that data type okay now after that i need to write it of course this data should be written permanently in your file number okay write has one it is done now which are the data type that we associated name n dollar address a dollar phone number and age okay but after this we have no provision for the continuation as for the question it is asking you that you need to make a provision for the continuation that means you should be asked do you want to continue or not so let's do that now let's say uh, do you want to continue for example and your answer is going to be either yes or no so i'm going to write if y dollar is equals to capital letter y or your answer is is equals to small letter y then i'd like to continue then where do I, where do i have to go then i'm going to go to lab okay now let's see now after you provide a data for one time it will write that data in your master file now after writing a data if you re remember the flow of sequence of file handling is top to bottom so then we'll be coming to this line after the data is written for the first time we'll be coming back over here that means flowing to the next line here it's going to ask you do you want to continue if you say if you press capital letter y or small letter y it's going to take you back to the block where which block label this can be termed as a label also it will take you to the label lab only in a case if you press y okay now after that what's going to happen again the same thing will continue again it will ask you to provide the data it's going to write the data in your master file and then again it is going to ask you do you want to continue again if you say why then again it will ask you that means it's going to help you to add a record as much as you want and after providing a data if you say no further i do not want to add any more record in that case you write press any letter it will exit why because this condition does not match so when this condition does not match it will not take you to this block that means it will take you to the next line this is the power of your control statement so if you are confused with this control statement how it works i have also made a video for grade 9 okay it's not only for the grade 9 it is for 10 as well so if you are not clear about how the control statement work please do view the other video for which i have clearly made 
for the grade 9 syllabus as well. Now, so if you press any other key apart from the Y, it is going to send you over here. So sending over here means what? Program is over. So let's run this program and see whether it works practically or not. So let's gonna run. So it's going to ask you the name. Let's say first. You can give anything, okay? Since we're in your lab, lab environment. Address, okay? Let's say KTM. Phone number is anything. And then, remember, we make a provision for the continuous. And now it's asking you, do you want to continue? You press any letter, capital or small. It's going to ask you again because it will take you to the block of code where the label is given as a lab. So it's asking you the second time again. Okay, so let's say last. Okay, then let's give KTM only just for the example. And then number, anything you want. But this time I do not want to continue. So I'm going to write yes. Now you make a guess. Do you think it's going to allow you to continue further in order to add a more record since I wrote yes? Guess for a few seconds. And I hope that you all have guessed right. It is not going to allow me to continue further. Why? The condition that we have defined with the control statement was only with a one letter. That was why. If you press Y, it will take as a yes and it will take you to the block lab but if i write yes there is no block that we have defined along with these three characters so that's why it's going to end the program see congratulations and it's done successfully okay now in this session uh, we have learned how to create a sequential data file okay uh, in two cases now number one you will be informed, you will be asked to store our data for a particular number of times. Number two, you will not be defined that how many records are to be stored. Predefined, it is not specified. And but you will also be, you know, asked a question in a sequential file and telling that you must make a provision for the continuous. And so for both the condition, we have written this program. So in our next video, we are going to see how to use the input mode. That means how to display all of the contents in these two files that we created just now. So if you find it fruitful, if it was easy for you to understand, please do like and subscribe and do watch the next video for the next mode. Thank you.